Okay, in the last video, we talked about uh, what it means to base a layout on responsive design grid. Um, and so we finally came to some conclusions, and uh, I want to just review those really quickly before we actually start setting up our document. Um, we finally got to the point where we decided that 1,280 pixels was going to be our maximum PSD document width, and that is, of course, we discussed before based on uh, a laptop, a basic laptop size being as uh, set up as a middle ground breakpoint. Okay, and and as of right now, we're not doing any other layout sizes, but we're just going to focus on this one size. Okay, and then from there, we said, okay, well, that's going to be the total size of the document, but we want left and right margins. So. Just it's easier sometimes for I think for us to think in terms of percentages um, than it is in terms of actual you know units of measure like pixels. Um, so what I'd said is okay, well if it's 1280, I think generally like maybe 80%. I think I, before I said something like 85%, but eh, I changed my mind. So something like around 80% of 1280 um, would be good because then that if we center it, that gives us 10% on each margin. Um, total of 100, right? Um, and so if we do the math on that and, and we convert the, the percentages to pixels, we say, okay, well, 1,280 pixels times 80% or 0.8 uh, would give us uh, somewhere in the ballpark of 1,200, uh, not 1,200, excuse me, 1,024 pixels, okay? And that that's about the size for the content. Well, because we have to divide that content area up into about 12 different sections with gutters in between, um, it gets a little bit more complicated if you have a, an oddball number like 1024. It's a whole lot easier to work with 1,000. Um, so instead, I'm just going to make the executive decision to say, okay, well, we're going to move from 1024 to 1,000. And so that's how big we're deciding to make the content section. So then the next thing we said is, okay, well, let's figure out in pixels then how big those margins are going to be. So I took 1,280, which is the total PSD document size, and subtracted 1,000 pixels. That gives us 280 pixels that we need to split between the left and the right margins. And so that ends up being a total of 140 pixels for each left and right margin. So this gives us a basic starting point for uh, setting up our PSD document. And the thing that we didn't really discuss is the height of the document. Well, in a website, the height is going to be, typically is going to be um, fluid in that it's going to be as tall as it needs to be to accommodate the content that you've put in the, the web page. But we can't really plan for that in a document that's a PSD document. We can't just say, okay, well, the document's going to just keep going until it's done. It, Photoshop doesn't work like that. It needs a specific pixel dimension. So we're going to arbitrarily just pick a really, really tall dimension so that we can accommodate all of our different uh, sections. And remember, this really tall dimension wouldn't all fit on one screen in, you know, from the top to bottom and be contained, like a poster, let's say, would. Instead, it's going to be something that we scroll. And if you need to sort of me to jog your memory about what I mean by that is, if I this is this is the whole sort of general document that we're going to make, but you know this isn't really the way that we would view it on a 1280 screen. This is the way that we would view it on a 1280 screen where it's scrollable, right? So the 1280 part, we're going to see the full 1280, but the idea is that just like a regular website is something that you would scroll, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and go into Photoshop and let's do a new file, okay? And one of the things that you're gonna notice right away is that I'm, uh, you might have noticed that some of the other videos said Adobe Photoshop CC 2014. Um, most of the things from this tutorial have not changed, but there are a couple of things that have. And one of the things that I am doing an update for in the middle of this video is with 2017, because the way that it looks whenever you go to create a new document, it looks different than it used to look. And so um, one of the things that you can do is it has some nice presets up here. So one of the things you can go ahead and do is click over here on web and uh, it comes with some basic standard 
uh, sizes. If you click on View All Presets, you'll notice that we have one that's for 1280 by 800. You could choose any of these sizes, but I recommend that you sort of um, start in a smallish laptop. Um, now, you could, of course, if you wanted, start even smaller for like a phone size or something, but um, but we're going to start with 1280 by 800 as a basic template size. I'm going to select this, um, and you see it automatically updates my stuff over here. Uh, and the reason that I'm choosing this is because it's a, a pretty good standard between a laptop, a tablet, and a desktop computer. So um, this this is a good laptop size. Now, if I scroll down, I want to just show you something. You'll see templates here. Do not, do not, I repeat the third time, do not choose one of these templates. I Part of the grade, um, whenever I go to grade your stuff, is I actually look in your file. And it will be painfully obvious to me if you used somebody's um, template, OK? some some paid or free template, I will immediately recognize that that's, that's the case. And so um, do not use that, OK? That's really important. So anyway, um, go ahead and start with web small. And now there are a couple things. You could go ahead and, and give it a title here if you wanted. So we'll call ours Werner-Mitchell, and I'll say 1280. So I know that it's the 1280 view. And uh, that, that's fine for the basic beginning of the title. So 1280 wide. Now the height isn't going to begin to address the length of a single long scrolling page. So just there's no way that you would necessarily know this for sure. Um, but uh, one of the things that you can do is um, just change this. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you right away that it's going to be somewhere probably in the ballpark of 3,200 pixels that we might want to start. You could put some even larger outrageous number. You can always increase your canvas size later. I don't want to start with something too, too big because then it'll hog memory in the computer. Um, but this is probably somewhere in the right ballpark. Now, the other thing, too, is we want to keep the resolution at 72 ppi, uh, RGB color. 8-bit is good. I'm going to leave my background as white. Um, I wouldn't choose transparent. Uh, well, it's not giving me that option anyway, but anyway, choose white. And the reason it's not giving you transparent as an option here is because it is, in fact, a web uh, format. And web formats, uh, white just doesn't make, it, white makes the most sense because that's the standard color that you're going to have as a background. You don't have a transparency option with web. You have to have some sort of background base color. Under advanced options, you can go ahead under don't color manage and go ahead and choose working uh, RGB or sRGB. All right, that's the standard for web and you want square pixels. Okay, and the other thing too I want to make a point of uh, showing you is that if you leave artboards selected, all right, it will create artboards. Since the original um, recording of most of this demonstration, artboards were introduced. And so in a lot of the videos, what you're going to see is something without artboards. You can always add artboards later uh, if you deselect this. If you want it to look in the video just like kind of like it's looking um, on your screen, then deselect artboards. If you want to go ahead and start with artboards, it's not going to be any kind of rocket science complicated thing, right? If you want to leave that selected. Um, and I can even show you the difference between what it looks like with and without. Um, but you will see that the rest of the demonstration after I do this does not have an artboard. If I leave artboards selected, um, one of the things that you'll note, let's just go ahead and click on create. I'm going to copy the name of this though, so that I can recreate this uh, again. I'll leave artboard selected for now. Let me just show you if I s click on create. What you're going to see in the newer versions uh, of 2017 is you're going to see that it gives it a name here, artboard, and it also puts everything inside of uh, this artboard one. Okay, and it's also called layer one instead of background. I think that the default in the older version is background. Okay, so uh, and you can name the artboard if you want. You can give it a name and you can call this 1280 view, right? So I'm just pointing out that the difference is going to be between the rest of the video instruction between this 
uh, and the rest of the video instruction is that this is an artboard right here, okay, and it tells you what the artboard is. Because you can now in Photoshop have multiple artboards like you can in Illustrator. Um, but for the majority of our tutorial, we are just going to be creating one artboard. So if you want to go ahead and have it look exactly like the tutorial, um, you can close this and not save it. All right, so I'm going to click Don't Save, and we'll go back up here to create a new file. And I'll go back over here to web, view all presets. I'll go with web small, which is 1280 by 800. I'll change the height back again to 3200. I'll go ahead and give it a title here. I'm going to deselect artboards this time. And uh, everything else, oh, and I will go ahead and color manage using our sRGB, and I'll hit create. OK, and this is the way that it's going to look now without artboards for the rest of the tutorial. Just so you know, I don't want you to be confused by that. But if you want to go ahead and create the artboard, that's fine too. But um, I will show you later how you can basically put all of what you create later into an artboard as well. OK, and if I want, I can go ahead and save this file. And I'm putting it in that Warner Mitchell same folder that I put my badges, my logo badge, and my logo in. And we're going to go ahead and save that. So now it's saved. And anytime I want to save, I can just do my shortcut command S, and it automatically save. OK, so now we can go ahead and start setting up our guides. And the first thing I want to make sure of, and Photoshop should automatically do that, is it should register the zero pixel right here in the top left corner. So if I put my cursor, let's blow this up actually. So if I put my, um, I'm just taking the selection tool, um, and I put my cursor kind of right there, you should see this little um, uh, hairline line up in the ruler. It's, it's like the cross hairline. Uh, in the rulers, you should see it um, register at zero, zero on the X and Y axis. If it, for any reason, it ever doesn't, uh, if you didn't already know this, the best way to fix that is to take this corner right here, this registration mark, and then you're going to drag it to the zero, zero corner, and it'll set it for you, OK? So I'm going to undo that, but because mine's already set properly. And, and if you do that, I would blow it up really big to make sure you're really getting it in the right spot. Um, now, the next thing that we want to do is if, oh, and by the way, if your rulers aren't showing, you can toggle them on and off by doing either Command R or uh, Control R if you're on Windows. And one of the things that um, you need to also make sure of is, is that this is set up in pixels and not in inches. So you can toggle that by right clicking in the ruler and making sure that pixels is selected. So. Now, the next thing uh, is I'm going to start dragging out some rulers because, you know, based on what we said, or dragging out guides, not rulers, based on what we said before is that, you know, we, we want to have this 140 on each side. And the other thing, too, that we can look at is first make sure that our, we're going to be able to actually see the guides. So if you go to guide or you go to show and make sure that it's going to show our guides. So... It is. <clears throat> so if I drag this out, you can see where it's going, like up here. And see how it's kind of hard for me to figure out, okay, well, that's 150, but, you know, is that 140? Yeah, I think that's 140. And it tells me on the x-axis, and as you can see right, right above where my little um, left and right arrows are on the guide, you can see the x-axis moving, so I know exactly where I'm dropping it. But it's really kind of hard to get it dead on, on the money. So instead of drawing out your guides like this, there is a simpler way, because I can tell you that this is really challenging if you're trying to draw out all of those guides for all of those gutters and everything. So let me explain to you. I'm going to hit undo. A really easy way of doing your guides is there's this thing called Guide Guide, and it's literally guideguide.me <clears throat> if you want to go to the website. What you'll see after you install it is in your um, 
in your uh, panels over here, you'll see something that looks like a little grid, and it's Guide Guide. Well, if you click on that, and the other thing that you can also do, too, is go up here to Window Extensions, if you can't seem to locate it on your screen, and make sure that Guide Guide is checked, and it should pop right up. Now, this is a really awesome tool because it'll help you create your grids. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with what we know, okay? Um, the first thing is we've already got, I don't have to tell it to be 1280 because the document is 1280. So the first thing is we know our, our margins. So the left margin will be 140 and you have to put the unit of measure pixel. The right margin is 140 pixels. This is the top margin. And by the way, if you just hover these, the little tool tip will pop up. So what I can do here is um, for the top margin, I, I like to go ahead and put a top margin. And the reason I'm going to use top margin is not because I'm going to bump my whole layout down, but because if you go back here and we look at the drawing, you see that top margin, I could use the guide as my navigation toolbar, right? Where it says who we are, our team, and so forth, okay? So let's go back there, and I'm gonna say that that's about 50 pixels, all right? And then uh, I'm not gonna bother with a bottom margin because I don't yet know how long my document's gonna be, so we'll get to that when it's time. And then our column count we decided is 12, all right? And there's not a unit of measure, it's just a number. And then the column width, this part, um, I'm not going to go into the math of it right now because sometimes figuring out the perfect math is complex because of dealing with the margins or the gutters in between. So I'm just going to tell you that I figured out a good, a good measure was 65 pixels for the column width and about 20 pixels for the gutters. Okay. And so we're doing okay. And if I want to go ahead now and just make my grid, I can go ahead and click on it. And you see it automatically sets my grid up. If we go back and let's zoom out a little bit so you can see it better. And it's perfect. Like I don't know that I could have actually done something quite so perfect. All right. Um, and now I have something that I can start working with. Now, um, this helps me get my, you know, my, my box up here or my first bar for the navigation up there. But there are some other sections, too, that I'm going to need. And I'm not going to draw my horizontal lines until I actually need them. So for right now, I'm just going to start sticking vector stuff in so that we can get a general sense of our layout. I'm going to go ahead and end this demonstration uh, for this video right here. And in the next one, we're going to move on to uh, the framework creation.